Hello and welcome to YouTube's favorite comic book channel, Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Jim Rugg. I'm Ed Piscor. Before we dive into a very fun issue of Madman Comics, I want to remind everybody that we are working cartoonists. You see our bibliographies here. Best way to support Cartoonist Kayfabe is to buy the comics that we make. We also have a Patreon. Patreon.com slash Cartoonist Kayfabe. Three different levels there give you access to our videos early. Keep you ahead of the kayfabe effect. If there's a book you really want to add to your collection, you can get it first. Also, at the King Kayfaber level, you get access to all of our videos and the recording sessions. So we got a bunch of King Kayfabers watching us as we go through these books today and every Thursday. Our next batch of releases. For me, Street Angel, Princess of Poverty, will be out in July from Image Comics. This collects all of the Street Angel comics that are not in Deadliest Girl Alive. So get both books. You'll have the complete Street Angel experience. I also have Hulk Grand Design and the Plain Janes, as well as my own Patreon. Ed has some big books coming out this year, starting with Hip Hop Family Tree, The Omnibus. This will be out later this year. Need to pre-order this one now collects all the hip-hop family tree comics in one handsome hardcover volume along with 140 extra pages so get your name on an early copy of that because it's probably going to sell out red room crypto killers the next season of red room will be starting up very soon after you see this video and uh, four issues of crypto killers will be coming out monthly reserve that at your local comic shop there are the covers to the first two issues you can also pick up x-men grand design three volumes plus an omnibus WYSIWYG, and uh, the original Hip Hop Family Tree Treasury Size Editions. Let's do it. All right. So, Mike Allred, we've looked at a few of his comics in the past. Known for his character Madman, one of his first hit comics from uh, early in his career, and he's come back to Madman several times. Several series of Madman exist. This one from Image Comics. And we are looking at issue number three because there's some fun stuff going on here. Right in the beginning, you're going to see this list of creators. You may want to come back and reference this screenshot as we go through the issue because he is homaging all these different styles. And they range from newspaper cartoonist to the Looney Tune gangs, Chuck Jones, Tex Avery, to contemporary cartoonists, historical comic book artists, some European comic book artists, alternative comic book artists. It is just comics, 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 and um, we're going to do our best to keep up. Yeah, let's play that game. And I think uh, as we go through and identify this stuff, I see this as an extension to our Scott... To our uh, that X Men issue that we looked at, where a bunch of different artists yes. pencil pages, and we could pull out style things that are indicative of uh, said said creators, and and it it will, be, it will be the things that Mark that Mike Allred is is pulling out to kind of you know convey their style. Yeah, it's really funny to see these guys, uh, especially cartoonists that are very stylistic or cartoonists that we know well, and then you see like what are the ticks that Mike Allred identifies as in association with this or that cartoonist. And so I and I ask you to to chime in plenty because you are very good. Like look at the Red Room homage covers. You are very good at not keeping consistent with your tools, right? And you and you will use the tools that went into the creation of like a Zap Zero cover and to to get that Robert Crumb feel. Allred's a brush slinger. Yes. Of the highest order and a lot of it still has the Allred in it. Yeah, of course, yeah. So don't be shy, man, uh, when, when speaking up. This is um, All Red doing All Red, and at this point, it looks like he's adding a wash layer. Mm -hmm. I like how All Red has kind of like continually evolved stylistically. Yeah. If you were to pull out a sample of all his Mad Mans, you'd get little different <laughs> variations along the way. Who's the, who's the, is Laura still coloring Yes, she's stuff? coloring this one. Because there's, uh, yeah, there's definitely periods. And the, the premise, I guess... Something happened to Madman in the previous issue, and now he's coming back to reality, but he's got to go through this situation of, like, all these different styles. And uh, here it is, man. From this point, we are diving in. Yeah, and off the bat, like, we just kind of know that that's Little Nemo. Yes. But it's not really Windsor McKay that much. Uh, Windsor McKay never used rulers. Uh, the the color, so it's dots, but it's not like the yellow patina, the right. stuff that you created, you know, like, like all red could have done the exact thing and it's a little guy, but it's still, that's still all red style. Uh, it's whimsical. So we know that that's McKay, but that's, that's simple. Just like we know this one, that's Seeger. Right. Cause, because that's the, not the goon, not Alice the goon, but, uh, what's that? What, what the hell's that, uh, character's name? That's a part of the Alice the goon story. Oh man. 
I'm not going to pull it out. No, no, no. Th- uh, my bad. This is Alice the Goon. I was thinking the other character is the Sea Hag. Oh, right. Yeah, yes. that is Alice the Goon. These goons used to scare me so much. <laughs> yeah, and of course that's uh, Popeye. So if you look at, if you follow the list as near as I can tell, they're listed like sort of in their appearance order. But there's also mashups. So I think this is credited as Floyd Godfordson and Carl Barks, for example. And uh, it's hard to tell like no, where those split. I, I, I disagree. The, I, this is Carl Barks, this background. Oh, you think? I do. It's it's this right here. He would, he does his, his lettering just like that. That's uh, Carl Barks lettering. This this is, uh, that's, uh, that's Frank King, man. That's he he, he calls this one as Frank King. This Just is FYI. Nah, man. This is uh, this is how foster Tarzan. Oh, oh, this is Tarzan. That's well, maybe that's Skeezix or something. But like, that's that's how foster Tarzan. I, I, I'll bet anybody any money on that. We know who that is. You could say it. Yeah, Harriman, Crazy Cat, of course. Um, what you got for this one? Oh, I forget who this is. It's it's the, this is the Telltale. That's Kniff. There, there's like that Asian character, and then you could see the Terry hair. Right, yeah, And Terry. then the Chiroscuro, however you say that shit. And, you know, this is getting into your Looney Tunes, where I think we're seeing a mashup of several styles falling under the Looney Tunes, Tex Avery, Chuck Jones banner. Well, I mean, this is Chuck Jones, and this is Tex Avery. They're two different. So this is the Tex Avery, and that's the Chuck Jones. I am falling off. Yeah. And I'm going to on a lot of these. Yeah, because cause he, he's referencing dudes like... You could show me a thousand pages of the dude's artwork. Like, like I don't know who this guy is. Like, that's that may be his Hal Foster. Yeah, that's not. I don't want to. Uh, yeah, don't reference even... all these, but yeah. for the first page, it's probably not a bad thing to get get these kind of right. Um, yeah, it's a Hal Foster's who he's given credit to there on that page, but it it does kind of jump around and like. You pointed out some of these panels do feature multiple artists and possibly playing with either maybe different artists for each character or backgrounds. So it can be a lot. Yeah, like that top one. Oh, it's like Siegel and Schuster. Yeah. This. So maybe that's all of that. One of the things that he does that's, that's kind of clever, I think, and tips the, his hand a little bit is he'll find like a pose mm-hmm. or maybe reference a panel or a cover, something that's pretty well known as a... Um, you know, not not just style, but also like a like a compositional reference. Right. That's like your Dick Sprang, like a like a Batman insert artist, Jerry Robertson, who, whoever the fuck. But then like this stuff, what is that? Yeah, I don't know that one. And I wonder if that's an early Marvel cover. Do you picture um, like a Ditko? Well, I was thinking of like Namor or something. One of those covers. I feel oh, like I I've see. seen this image, but yeah, it gets very out there. I can tell who this one is. Go ahead. Eisner. Ah, uh, yeah. You could see it in that face. And then this is from, like, that's that would be the spirit. It's funny because I always think of his gloves as being Eisner-esque. Uh-huh. Like, like, not in this issue, but in every issue. <laughs> it's the eye shape and, like, the shape of the face. I don't know this one. I don't either. And I wonder if this is possibly a Jack Cole Plastic Man. Right. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. Uh, you know, and then some of them that just obvious that, that we're looking at. Charles Schultz there. Uh, where the wild things are. So this is interesting too because like it's not like he's just doing comic book artists. You know what's what's funny about that? Like, like actually, didn't, I, I because I was just thinking of comics. I was thinking of Tony Millionaire. Mm. Yeah, it's funny that um, you would see that kind of similarity, like line style. So with this one, I was thinking of Jaime. I like, I like there must be a Jaime in here, and I and there are certain ones that I feel like would be super hard to pull out because of all red style like Charles Burns. Yeah. Uh, and I was like, is this the Jaime? Cause there's like the, um, subterranean ones in like issue five of 11 rockets where he would do his hatching just like this. And it's kind of like a similar vibe, but the cartooning might, that might be mashup. Like his little locas will kind of like be shaped like that. But, but I don't know what that yeah, is. Yeah. I don't think this is Jaime. I forget who it is. I don't think it's Maybe Jaime. It's I wonder if that hatching is a tip off. Well, that's what I'm saying, because Jaime would do that. This is probably some New Yorker shit. Yeah, I don't know who this is, but like... I Charles think Adams. Like, that's it. I'm yeah. pretty sure that's it. I was going to say Peter Arno, but anybody that works in those washes. Yeah. I like seeing those washes. I'm surprised that isn't a more common thing. I don't know that that first panel. Yeah, this one, uh, we're getting into Archie territory. Yeah. So I don't know if he's going like Dan DiCarlo <laughs> or uh, who exactly, but I think clearly there's some Archie there. I know the next one, for sure. Go ahead. It's Lou Abner. Ah, because that's him. That's Lou Abner. That's Daisy May. (laughs) (laughs) 
we're going Harvey. Yeah, and I think Harvey is a general kind of over, sure. overall. Because you can't pull any of those guys out. There's not like a Harry Lucy of Harvey. No, it's uh, Wayne, I'm going to say Wayne Boring, but um, Wayne Kramer, I think, is your Richie Rich guy who ends up doing like Heathcliff, I think, at Marvel's Star Comics mm. near the end. I don't know this last panel. I don't either. It looks very European to me. I like the shading, but I don't know who that is. Oh, I, 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 I know who this is. I don't know if it's both, but I know what that is. Go ahead. That's uh, Kurtzman. Yes. Yeah, Kurtzman's listed. I think Will Elder. This is, is your, yeah. This uh, is good your reference Beaver. there. Yeah, totally. Kriegstein is listed in here too. Um, I think this is your Kriegstein piece. Oh, uh, I I get it. There, I, there I know, are some I know of these what it that is. They just don't feel quite right. I think like this. I think is Jack Davis, and that feels way off. Yeah, because he because he's inking it himself. It's like it's like if uh, all red inked Jack Davis. So this background, this is totally Kriegstein, and this is that like time machine. Like it's that that sort of Asian motif from Incredible Science Fiction would be that. Uh, this is Johnny Craig. Yeah. Need to group that like on a page together. You yeah. Know, a bunch of the EC stuff. Here's a Frazetta. And, you know, I think getting that whole page. Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll take your word on that one. But see, like this kind of image to me is one of those where like we're referencing a very specific piece. Yeah. Johnny Comet or something. Mm -hmm. Is this Jeff Smith? I, I I say that because of that. Like Jeff Smith will do rock textures that way. I think it may be Alex Toth, but this is such an all red yeah. pose and everything. Like again, it's where this stuff gets kind of tricky. And also, I think if it's somebody that's uh, a style like an influence on his regular style, it becomes very weird too. Whenever it's because it's just like a more accented Mike Allred. I'm gonna say Wally Wood on this one. Yeah, I think that sounds right. That face is very that face. Wood. And then that kind of, that's like a Thunder Agents kind of pose. Like when Wally Wood would trace like muscle men, you could always tell because the proportions are normal human proportions and they're not super heroic. So they're accurate, but they, but Superman looks squat because yeah. it's just, you know, a different guy. And all you have to do is make the head smaller and then it becomes super heroic. Yeah. It's such an interesting trick. Reduce that head, make him 11 heads tall instead of like seven and a half. I think this is Qbert. And it might be all three Qberts, uh, you know, in terms <laughs> of the credits. But I feel like you can see the Qbert sort of pose there in the middle. Yeah, I was going to ask because like that, that would that would fit the, the Tarzan motif. But like if you would have made me guess, I would have said Paul Chadwick. Because like that looks concrete like a like a statue and like Paul Chadwick will have like a bold outline and kind of like thinner inlines like that that could be like a Joe Kubert kind of line but um I'm just we're we're having fun here I know I'm not sure who this is you know I feel like we'll feel dumb yeah we probably will cuz like cuz like this stuff it's pretty distinct and and one person I don't think it's what he's going for but um Don Simpson will shade like this with like a brush hatch at the edges, but I but I don't know. At yeah, and they're distinct poses, which makes me think like you know if we had that name in front of us, we'd be like, oh yeah, that's like this or that. Yeah, maybe it's like Big Bang, like Tom King or something. Because that's such a weird angle of perspective. Yeah, you know, he's like boxing something. something. Yeah, totally. This just all red. Totally. Don't don't uh, don't don't strain yourself trying mm -hmm. to figure out who this fits with. But I do like him using the lettering uh, in a weird way. We could be like <laughs> Gene Day or something. <laughs> all right, man. Rich Buckler, maybe. Uh, so this is a kind of a mashup because I think that there's some Kirby in here, obviously definitely Kirby. But there's also I think Romita is credited on this page, and I can't remember if there's anybody else um, credited on here. So you have kind of a mashup of that Silver Age era yeah, but, Marvel. Yeah, that might be. That's probably Ditko. But this is definitely Kirby. And then on this, I'm like, okay, well we're Starenko, and it's like he's not there. He's here. Yeah. Yeah, and you get to tip off with your background element. This is a Barry Windsor Smith, and this is one of those weird ones where it's like a very specific Barry Windsor Smith. Early. And, right. Conan, right. Conan period. Not, not what I think of as Barry Windsor Smith exactly, like premature Barry Windsor Smith. Right, but like the old heads, like 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 a all red, they would have responded to these like marks and stuff. That's what everybody loved about Gore Blimey and, mm -hmm. and pre-Gore Blimey. Uh, this, I just don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure about that one. Frank Miller here. This right, is another one a that feels like cover. it's a very clear reference to a specific Miller piece. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely, it's Daredevil era for sure. 
Here we get into some Europeans. Um, you know, somebody like Mobius, easy enough to see. Jeff Darrow in this panel. Right, relegated with the, with the Europeans, which is funny. When I saw this face... This may be a Hergé reference there. Yeah, yeah, I think that's safe. When I saw this face, I, I thought it was uh, Richard Sala. But later on, I think we'll see we'll see an actual Richard Sala. Yeah, very much. When I saw this, I was thinking of, like, Andy Watson. Mm. Dave Stevens? Yeah, I think w- so, With yeah. the titties? Yep, yep. This is your Charles Burns. Yeah. And this is one of those where, like, it's more all red than Burns. Right. You know, the Burns feathering is something... Um, I recently did a Burns yes. piece. I love Burns, but it's a bigger feather, uh, what he yeah. does. Yeah, but there are still, like, pieces. This would almost be like if Burns penciled it and somebody else inked it that had a little bit of a different finish. Because, like, the way the the hair is lit makes is, is I think, consistent with to- the Burns piece. Yeah, totally. And, and like I said, man, I, there's so much Burns in All Red to me anyhow that, like, it was going to be a thing. So like, he did the right move, like, like... Like I know this image, so it so it sort of makes sense. I bet this is like a mashup. This is your Jaime. This is a mashup. Yeah, it's the Hernandez brothers panel. Yeah, yeah. You see the Jaime here, here. That's like Rand Race. It just looks like Jaime, really, to me. I don't see the mashup. Would that would that be you know the Gilbert report or the background? <laughs> Possibly, because it all feels Jaime ish to me. Chester Brown. Oh yeah, sure. That's Ed the Happy Clown. I would I wouldn't have guessed that on my own. Well, it's funny because if you look at look at <laughs> Joe in that panel, I don't know that I see Chester Brown in those Joe faces too much. It, it, maybe it's another another mash deal, you know, with a, with a, like that hand is a Chester Brown hand. Yeah, uh, Klaus. Yeah, totally. And this is a fun one for me because I think of Klaus as really, you know, unique stylistically. So you get to see like little bits, like that mouth and eyes, just little details that are Klausian. You could find a Chester Brown uh, velvet like. Apo issue one. You can find a Jim Rugg mm-hmm. Apo issue one uh, using that face. Klaus does this thing where it's like a shadow on the top of the lip. Yeah. And I, I just saw a picture recently of somebody where it's like, that is totally a Klaus drawing. Like it's a very, um, it's it's stylistically Klaus, but also like you can find references where it's like, that is a hundred percent. Like there are people that have that feature. There's your Richard Sala. Yeah. Pretty good Richard Sala. I think. <laughs> you get the four panels because that's the Jimmy Corrigan. Yeah era stuff yeah. and, and it's also that like uh what was it's that, that one? superman yeah uh, character in jimmy corgan too totally <laughs> i'm lost on that one is that a jay stevens see that's the other thing man because those dudes are so close like yeah. like you know like this is this is bernie merlot mm-hmm. um i wonder if joe matt factors into this like like is he one of these guys yeah these two have me at a loss one of them might be a Matt Wagner, just judging. I'm guessing kind of on placement, you know? Right. Um, not positive about that. On subject matter, like, could that be a Chadwick? That's just me fully guessing. Because, like... Could be a Mark Schultz. Oh, that's true. Because that background, I feel like there's some Mark Schultz in there. Um, I think this is Alex Ross. And I think that may be a reference to something specific. Keep that in mind, because because I might have another Alex Ross okay. choice. That's so familiar, and I don't know. Is that like Lou Fine? You know, it's like some golden age. Like, you imagine a shield right here. Right. Like a Lou Fine fucking body. But Lou Fine was a pen guy. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. I'm not sure who that one is. Uh, Kevin Nolan, and this is really interesting to me, because we just looked at a Kevin Nolan artist edition... And to me, this is like the mark making falls off. Like you're, totally. you're, you're missing some of the Kevin Nolan isms, um, maybe in the tools or whatever. But like this is distinct Nolan. Dave Gibbons. Oh yeah. Wa- Watchmen era. Totally. I don't know about that one. This feels like some like crusty bunker, like Tom Grinberg type shit or something. You know, something that would be at Continuity Studios. Boland is listed in here somewhere too. Yeah, and that's uh, a that's, that's a tough that's a tough act, man. Yeah, that's another one where like so much of Boland for me is in that finishing, but um, also that may not be the Boland. It may be you know somewhere else as we go along. A Mike Mignola, pretty uh, pretty clear here. Although stylistically, he's a long way from this. Okay, these this is Art Adams' hands. Ah, uh, yeah, that's... kind of the proportions to that body looks about. about okay, Art you know Adams what this has. is? This this is um. Creature from the Black Lagoon era, <laughs> Art Adams. <laughs> That's hilarious. We're nerds, yo. Um, Bruce Tim. Yeah, that makes sense. 
And now here, I'm not sure. Is that something you recognize? It's not, man, but it's pretty fucking dope. I like that style. Yeah, it's long and lanky and some motion, but not sure who that is. Paul Pope. For sure. It's it's in like, it's so funny because they're both chunky brush anchors. Right. But it's like going even, first off, the hair, for sure. The face to the lips, the mouth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's so dumb, like the stuff that but, well, is you, significant stylistically. But what's interesting is like, All Red is so tight yeah. of an anchor, and Paul Pope is so expressive, and will just like, whoosh, whoosh, I just imagine him slashing his inks in there, but but uh, All Red cannot let himself do it, so his way of doing that is like more more hatch marks. I actually really like this kind of like some of the drawing and the line mark around here. I really like. I don't I I don't know that it's accurate to Pope. But I like that kind of like couple of brush brushes strokes together to make like big heavy black areas. I'm a fan of that. I'm not sure of either of these two. Could See, be a Teddy Christensen. I'm I think, just not sure about this. You know that face looks distinct, but I, I can't tell you exactly. I think one of these, like like this, maybe was my um, Alex Ross thought, like this or this one, because I feel like that's like Astro City or something. Mm -hmm. I feel like we're getting to, into All Red's friends here because yes. like, I don't recognize anything. As we get further along, this friend Chris, Quietly. I was going to say, I thought this was uh, Chris Sprouse, but I think you're right. Yeah, because this face is totally a Quietly yeah, face. Yeah, this is Flex Metallo. And, and, and this one too, the the, all, the uh, Madman, very... That's Flex Metallo for sure. Body. These other ones? They're so close. Like I feel like I've seen this face, but I'm just not, not pulling it out. Is Dave Lapham in here? Because like, Lapham will do hair that way. And then I think we get into a place where, like, when he mash it, like, there'll be two faces that are two different cartoonists. Like, we'll see it real clear with, like, a Matt Groening. You think this is a Darwin Cook? See, that's the other thing, man. Like, he's got that very similar kind of thick line. All right. Okay. So, all bets are now off. We, we do have an Eric Larson side sure. in here to start this thing off. But if you look, if you go correspond with the original list, there might be 50 or 60 names. You know, like Dave Cooper. Okay. Very clear here. Yeah, check this Maybe out. Maybe that's a Paul Chadwick. Oh, yeah, sure. So, like, both of these I had as Buscema, and yeah. I would bet there could be only one. And it was probably this, this one. one. Yeah. So, is that... I mean, you already did Kirby. Is that Sal Buscema? <laughs> Are we getting That's to that thing, level? Man. You get into like Marvel House style of, say, the 70s. Good luck. Good luck pulling stuff out because it's more inker in some of those cases than it is the penciler. I went so far. Like, I'm like, is that like one of the Hanukkah brothers from Bipolar? <laughs> wow. That's funny. I, I don't think so. I forget who that is. No, I don't think it is either. I forget who it is. It, but, you know, clearly distinct. Like, that could be the Teddy Christensen for all I know. But a lot of this stuff, I don't, I don't, I'm not sure. No. Um, Such mashups throughout here. I think this might be Jeff Smith. Okay. I, I could, I could get on board with that because he will do a big chunky line with like a lot of thins. There was a card, like the Kevin Nolan Madman card was almost like this, that piece right there. Yeah. Kinda, I like that version. Oh, you know who this is, is uh, Brennan McCarthy, I think. Oh, uh, okay. Think. He's in here. He's listed in the credits somewhere. That uh, feels a little McCarthy. This is a good one. Hewlett and yeah. uh, like Graining. Yeah, but it would probably be like the Bill Bongo Morrison. comics. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> That's a peep bag face right here. Yep. Uh, are we getting into like Terry Laban and like <laughs> Crumb? Wow. Yeah. This might be Don Simpson. His Forbidden Frankenstein is kind of like big like yeah, that. Yeah. Otomo. Sweet. <laughs> That's hard as that hell. Otomo is cool. I like these drawings. I'm not sure who they are, but I no. like the drawings. Yeah, me too. I don't know what these ones are. I don't know what that one is. But he's just going wild. You know, like you go across there. Good luck. Ah, uh, dude. That. This... Oh, Bill Watterson on the left. And you know who that is? Hair. No, it looks familiar. Yeah, dude. It's a. Uh... It's a Gary Panther, the, uh, the yeah. Raw magazine. Wow, that's a strange mashup. Yeah, you know, like a lot of these are pulling halves, half and half faces. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm just not... I'm Don Martin? Yeah, I assume. <laughs> Who else could that be? And and this looks like freaking a character from Doug, the car the cartoon. And I just can't believe that he would care about Doug so so I just know it's not do you think this is graining yeah maybe like bongo like like you like life in hell yeah era. life in hell yeah maybe that's probably some European stuff and that's that's back to all red 
Yep, we've snapped out of it at this point. What a fun comic. And, and you know... I like this gimmick, too, to, like, really pour it on as you're getting, like, four rows, five rows, and you're just kind of, like, the calm before the, you know, the, the darkest before the dawn kind of moment as he's about to emerge from this storyline. Just put it all on the pages. I, I mean, I want you to do this. I want you to make a comic where this happens because I just know, like, the rigors that you would go through, and I think it would take you six months to do, <laughs> to do one issue. Well, that's what he, he, he says back here is, like, this was something he wanted to do for a while and thought it'd be super easy and fun, and he's like... Not super easy. Um, but talks about switching through different tools and things like that. And, you know, for, for being maybe not as painstaking, he was putting this out on a monthly or damn near monthly basis. Uh, Tim Sell doing a Steranko homage there That's on fine. the back cover. Um, so, like we said, look in the beginning. You can pause it. You can kind of reference back and forth to see who all of these various artists are. Uh, but it, it's, it's a cool issue. And um, there's a couple of these out there. Like we talked about Savage Dragon doing the one that's all comic books or comic strips homages. So, you know, there are a couple of these examples of like odd stylistic mashups. Um, not that many, though, when you think about it. You'd think that a lot of cartoonists would fool around with ideas like this because it does seem like a fun thing to go through and just like ruminate on some of these artists that you like. And it's neat. It's really neat to me to see what he pulls out of different artists. Absolutely. Absolutely. And he really nails a lot of it. You know, he knows a lot of it. It's when you get into other brush guys and then it's when you, it's when you start to get into like your friends, like the people I, I imagine are just like his buds and stuff. Cause right. like, like what separates this? That from... might be burn. That might be uh, John Byrne. Okay. It's a very burn esque mouth <laughs> and the eyes are a little bit high. <laughs> <laughs> but like you know like so much of it looks so close this would be a funny one to go through page by page with him because in some cases like these eyes are really uneven and in one case it's like oh yeah that's the two-thirds <laughs> eye space but then is it just like deadline that the other eyes way offline jimmy just do me this favor man <laughs> go go in the front look because I, they're all in order yeah uh look for otomo and tell me if that's don simpson or not because i because i just want to know Oh, boy, there is a John Byrne there towards the end. Yeah. Damn, Bill Ray is one of the characters. Chester Gold is listed back there as well. Russ Heath, you know, like stuff like that's going to be really hard. Bob Powell, like almost impossible to pull that out. Totally. Do you see a Tomo? No, but he would be way back there. See, that was Marie Severin. That, that, okay, uh, Don Martin is listed right here, so it'd be up in here somewhere. Mark Chiarello, like, I have no idea what you're going to pull out of a Mark Chiarello. Yeah, Gary no. Panter, is it after Gary Panter? Uh, it's before Gary Panter, so just... Before Gary Panter. You know, and, like, Mark Silvestri, Jim Valentino, and Todd McFarlane, and, J and uh, Jim Lee all precede the Robert Crumb, so remember that as we get back there. Then there are people like Bill Sienkiewicz and David Mack and Dave McKean, and it's like... How are you going to subdivide those guys? It, you know, it like might they be a single panel. So much. There's Jamie Hewlett. Do I not see Otomo listed? But that's definitely Otomo. Yeah, clearly. Ketsuhiro Otomo. So before him is Dave Sim. Now go to that. Okay, that's like uh, the Roach character then. Yeah. But see, it fully falls off because Sim is such a pen dude. And that's clearly Brush. Yeah, like, none of this makes sense. Preceding Crumb, didn't I say, like, Jim Lee and Silvestri and stuff? Like, I don't know where you're getting any of that. No. Like, I wonder if it's supposed to be, but that's, like, too good. <laughs> like, if these little ticks are supposed to be, like, the McFarlane ticks, like, that, that's, that's not it. Yeah, right. It's very funny, like, seeing some of these faces and seeing the Crumb character in the middle of it just sweating, like, it's too much! It's an overload! Because <laughs> I kind of feel that way. We're, like, really digging into these, and it's like, four people were in this panel. <laughs> yeah, super intense. Total flaky foont. So so fun, man. I also like that it builds towards this moment. Of, like, it Got just to. gets more and more and more until it's just, like, overwhelming. Got you know? to. I mean, I mean, you know, take your hand away. Like, that's... The thumbnail, you know, get it fully in there. Like, I feel like you got your thumbnail yeah. for, for this video. What a cool issue. Yeah. This is a fun one. We, we, we definitely have to look at probably the dragon issue. Do you have it? I do have it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We should definitely do that. And uh, and this is another one. Like, if you guys have comments at home of, like, any other issues that are like this where guys are really pulling out some different styles and things, um, let us know. Because that's been very fun. Like, that issue of X-Men, Ed, that we looked at with all Scott Williams inks, I'm looking for more issues like that. Yeah, yeah. I'm seeing in the comments, man, J.H. Williams is a style mimic and has done this kind of thing. So, yep. what it... What... 
where will we see that Promethea or something? Yeah, I don't know if it's a specific like he's going to reference a specific artist or a number of artists, but it is definitely like jumping around stylistically through a lot of different tools and different uh, different approaches to issues and stories for sure. All right, good to go. I am. Kayfabers, like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the bell. We'll notify you when new vids are available. And King Kayfabers get to mitigate the Kayfabe effect by getting all of our videos delivered to them by way of our Patreon before anybody else. The vids are brought to you by the books that we make in 2023. is going to be a big year. Got the Hip Hop Family Tree Omnibus. Going to hit the uh, light. Going to hit the uh, holiday markets at the end of this year. 504 pages with 140 pages of uh, content, art, extras, and fresh art that I've drawn specifically for this. Uh, uh, 140 pages of that stuff coming to you for th this holiday. Red Room Crypto Killers 1 and 2. Here are the covers for those. Starting in May, going to come out on a monthly basis. Uh, two trade paperbacks of Red Room are out there right now. Three volumes of X-Men Grand Design are out there. And WYSIWYG. Jimmy, what do you have? Street Angel. Princess of Poverty will be coming to you later this summer from Image Comics. You can pre-order that one now. And it collects all of the Street Angel comics that are not in Street Angel Deadly Girl Live, which is also available from Image Comics. You can also pick up the Hulk Grand Design and the Plain Janes. And you can join me on my Patreon, patreon.com slash jimrug, where I'm serializing my latest comics every week. What else do we have going on, Jimmy? So subscribe to the Cartoonist KFAB newsletter at the links below this video. You can also find Cartoonist KFAB t-shirts, merchandise, mugs, hats, all kinds of cool stuff, fanny packs at our spread shop. That link is under this video as well. All great ways to support the Cartoonist Kayfabe channel. Give them those marching orders and we'll be on our way. Make more comics.